I'm Chef Frank. And I'm Chef Tracy. This is Proto Cooks, and today we're making fudge. We're back with Chef Tracy, and today she's gonna teach me how to make fudge. So in case they haven't seen our peanut brittle, which we will link down below, Chef Tracy is showing me how to make peanut brittle, and she's kind of teaching me how to make candy and sweets. I love candy and sweets. So uh, Tracy, in case they don't remember, tell us a little more about yourself. Thank you for having me back. Um, I'm a pastry chef, I'm a chef instructor, and during these weird COVID times, I've been working on a project called Bake It Forward. Okay, cool, and we're gonna link all of Tracy's information down below. In our peanut brittle video, we went through the ingredients and Chef Tracy told us about uh, what each ingredient kind of did for the brittle. Uh, fudge is different, right? Fudge is different, but the same. Okay. Because really candy is candy. Okay, Yoda. <laughs> Getting deep here. <laughs> but essentially, we're, again, we're not cooking a caramel. We're going to cook our sugar to closer to about 235 to 240, mm -hmm. which is basically a softball stage. Okay. So um, the sugar, we know what the sugar is. The sugar is the base of the candy. I would actually, I'm going to, let's do this. Let's okay. flip that on its head. Okay, go. To me, the base of the candy is going to be our milk is kind of acting as our liquid, okay. which is giving more flavor than our water. Sugar, corn syrup is another kind of sugar we talked about. And then our butter is giving flavor and also texture. Cool. So this is kind of the same, and this is really what we're cooking to softball. Okay, and what is a softball again? It's a stage of the sugar that we cook to. It's exactly, it's a stage of sugar. Softball is used a lot for also like marshmallow temperature. So it's your sugar is not at a hard crack stage like a lollipop. Okay. okay. And then we have our dark chocolate. I'm using a 61% cocoa powder. You wanna make sure your cocoa powder is unsweetened. I prefer using Dutch process because then it is basically, it makes it less acidic. Okay. What do we got to do first? So we're going to start by adding our, almost all of our ingredients. Okay. But I like to go with my sugar. Okay. And this is a pastry chef preference, right? This is a preference. I'm going to add my sugar and then you can really add your corn syrup, milk and butter. That order I don't care as much about. Okay. But I want to make sure that essentially all of this is wet and kind of starting to dissolve before I add my chocolate so they don't burn. Okay, cool. Milk. And the heat's not on yet, right? No heat yet. Okay, cool. Yes, we're getting there. Okay, so we turn the heat on now? You can turn the heat on now and I want you to go ahead and start mixing it. Go on low, go on like on a 60% heat for me. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll go up, okay, there you go. Sounds good, now give that a nice stir for me. Don't worry okay. about our crystallization, we're gonna be fine here. And, and we just want to make sure everything is? Basically coated. Coated, okay. And then you can go ahead and add your cocoa powder and your dark chocolate. And our dark chocolate is basically giving us the majority of our chocolate flavor, but the cocoa powder is, cocoa powder is essentially 100% chocolate. Okay. Pressed into a powder. We're doing that now? We're doing that now. Okay, so cocoa powder in? Yep, and that's giving you an actual real chocolate flavor. And then what's the chocolate doing? Uh, again, Fudge, chocolate. Um, Why are we using cocoa powder and chocolate? Okay, good, so tell me. So basically cocoa powder has no fat in it. It is the pressed cocoa bean that's been crushed and the cocoa butter and the cocoa mass has been separated. Okay. Now chocolate typically has a mix of really whatever the chocolate maker wants to put in it, but it has cocoa mass, cocoa butter, maybe some vanilla, maybe some milk, who knows. What we're gonna do now is let it come up to a boil, which is what temperature? 212. I feel like I'm testing him. 212. Fair night. <laughs> Sweating. Um, we need to bring this up to a boil. So at this point, I actually am going to bring it up higher. Okay. Just to kind of get it going. Once okay. it's going, we then can drop it to about a medium heat. Okay. I have found with fudge, because there's chocolate in it, chocolate loves to burn real quick. Okay. So we don't want it on a super high heat. There is a little bit of specialty equipment, and I'm not even sure it's really specialty equipment that we need for this. Uh, and Chef Trace is going to explain uh, what it is. Obviously, we have a glass bowl, so she'll tell us why. But there's a couple of other things we have that uh, you kind of need to have to do this, and it makes it a lot easier, right? Absolutely. Okay. So I think the first thing is what's right in front of us, okay. which is going to be an instant breed kind of probe style thermometer. This is necessary for fudge, but I'm with Chef Frank. You just need one of these. Yeah. Like worth the investment. Yeah. It's gonna cook your meat evenly, your candy. And then we have, I just have Pyrex. I use a lot of Pyrex. It's an eight by, or nine by nine, or an eight by eight dish. And Tracy, you put foil. Why not um, 
Parchment paper. You could totally use parchment paper. Uh, I use foil because this is going to work kind of as a release for us. Uh -huh. So we can pop it out later just to make our yes. lives easier. So it's foil and a little bit of shortening, but this also gives us like a sling. So when we take this out, it comes out in one big piece and it's supported and doesn't break. Okay. Fudge is pretty hands on the whole time. Yeah. Um, again, I noticed you're stirring, right? I'm when stirring. When we did the peanut brittle, you weren't stirring a lot. So chocolate, like I said, it burns really yeah. easy. So this is not something you can walk away with. Um, it doesn't take a long time, but it does require a little more okay. hay beans. So, so you want to consistently stir when you do this fudge? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, and fudge is one of these things that I like fudge. I don't eat it much, but uh, when I it, eat it, I really enjoy it. And there's something about like the texture and, I mean, it's obviously very sweet, but something about the texture of fudge that to me is addictive. To me, it's just nostalgic. I feel yeah. like fudge is not something you see a lot. Yeah. Um, so it's it has that special factor to it. So let's go ahead and just temp this. Okay. Just so to see where we're at. What? So when we temp this, what do I need to do? Because I know that when I temp meat, I go into several different places just for the fact that uh, towards the edge of the meat's always going to be hotter than the center. So I'm always conscious about where I'm putting this. So what do I need to put this? The so same exact idea, and also be careful because your metal pot is going to be hotter than your actual... So don't touch it to the metal. Exactly. So I like to kind of give it a tilt. Okay. Which your induction doesn't like, but it'll My induction there. doesn't like. So it's saying, should I stir it a little yeah, or no? Yeah, exactly. I get a little Move shake. Move it around a little. Get a little shake, shake, shake. See what's going we're on. We're at about 231. So we're doing well. We need to get all the way up to 238, but we're not far. Okay. I just noticed she turned the temperature down. So she turned it down, what, about two minutes ago? I turned it down when it's boiling. Like okay. Disgusting. So Your when it came to a boil... She turned it down. I didn't notice until too late. <laughs> okay, we're going to temp again, okay? What's great about this thermometer is that once you pick it up, it kind of turns on. So I'm going to give it a quick little stir. Try not to, I touched the bottom, but I'm going to try and stay away from that. We are at about 240 degrees. All right, so we are there, guys. It's just like I thought. It is holding nice on our spatula. So we're going to go ahead and take this off, and I'm just going to pour this into our bowl to let this cool down. And I want to scrape as much as I can, but again, I'm not going crazy because this is a time sensitive project that as much as I want to get every last bit, you also don't want to wait too long. Yeah. So it's like a fine little dance and I'm just letting it cool down for about 60 seconds. Just so like, I'm not chalking it, letting it, you know, okay. let it breathe. And then we're going to add our vanilla. Extract. So let's go ahead and add that vanilla extract. So vanilla and stir extract. That in. You want yep. me to stir? You can stir, go Excellent. ahead, stir, stir away, Chef Frank. What about the stuff on the, it feels a little grainy on the bottom. Is that's that okay? Much. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so good. I can just keep on stirring and get it up from the bottom. Yep, and let's let it cool now for about, I would say like three more minutes. Okay. And then we'll add our chopped pretzels. Of course, at home you can use really whatever kind of, I would say something that's stable. So something like M&Ms would not be great inside, but could go on top. It's changed from like this liquid to like a very crystally kind of solid now. Crystally solid. Crystally solid, you know. I think, oh, if you're getting that scraping action, I think we are at the point where we can add those. So uh -huh. let me just show everyone what I just said to the chef. See how I can actually like pull my sides? That's oh, what so I Oh, so it comes off in whole pieces, basically. Exactly. So she's she's basically okay, ready. Okay, so we can go. add our pretzels. Let's do it. And I'll, I'll stir. Let's go ahead and pour that into our pan. Okay. Going in. Going in. And then she's just going to hang out and cool. We'll top with some marshmallows. I would try not to move it anymore. Okay. So I know you want to spread it, but you want to make sure you've now crystallized it enough. Okay. And if you keep doing the crystallization, you actually will start to get more greens. Okay. So just give it like a little tap just to even out where you want it. Okay. And let's top it with some marshmallows because that's what Yay. Frank wants. So that, that's simple, guys. Frank wants. I can push these in a little? Yeah, just be careful of your hands, of course. Well, I have chef hands, so that's I'm, true. Not, I think we're okay. I'm not too worried. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Our fudge is done. It's in the pan. Um, and we're going to let it cool. And you suggested that a couple hours to four hours is good. But what's better? I would just do it overnight. Make your overnight. life easier. I'll say a good 12 hours. It's the next day. Chef Tracy has gone home. Our fudge has set overnight. So we're going to unmold it and we're going to give it a taste. So you see how we did that aluminum sling? It comes out really easy. Take the aluminum off. Ooh, ooh, baby. I'm gonna hold that up to the camera. Look at that. Fudgy, oh, 
Uh, don't worry if you miss a few marshmallows. I'm going to press that back on and we're going to cut this open. Ooh, look at that. Pretzels inside. Can you see? Oh my goodness. The texture looks good. Let's cut a piece so we can try. Uh, I'm going to cut the end piece off just because uh, it's not going to look all that pretty. Mmm. Mmm. I love fudge. <laughs> it's chocolatey. It's rich. Uh, the pretzels give it a little saltiness. The marshmallows. Uh, I'm not sure the marshmallows really do too much at this point, but they have a great texture to them. Uh, and it's great. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give us a like and subscribe. Hit the little bell to get reminders when we have new videos uh, up. Comments. I love hearing people's comments. Tracy's done videos before and you read the comments. Of course. I love reading the Be comments. Nice. <laughs> but even good comments or bad comments, I kind of get a chuckle out of the bad ones. Uh, <laughs> Because uh, I'm, I'm crazy like that, but it, leave comments. I love to read them. I'll try and answer as many as I can. We now have merch, Need Salt t-shirts. Look in the description for a link. Uh, we also have Patreon. I want to thank all of my patrons. I want to thank you, Chef Tracy. I hope you'll come back. I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks. Thanks for watching.